You don't need a luxury kitchen to prepare gourmet meals. I wanted a little on the sticky side. With a modest kitchen and some standard equipment, you can cook food that you would be proud to serve. There is my shrimp. All you need is a few helpful kitchen techniques, the ability to follow a recipe, a passion for food, and a fascination with cooking. Just follow along the rib cage. That is so good. My name is Dennis. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I was intrigued by a recipe that I found in one of my Italian cookbooks. This one. And what intrigued me about this was that it was roast stuffed chicken in the manner of roast suckling pig. Okay. And I want to read to you how he describes this, is why this is in the manner of. Cooked, filled with a large quantity of herbs, spices, and pancetta. Well, that pretty much describes a lot of roast geese or turkeys, chickens, ducks, roast pork chops, stuffed roast pork chops. I've been wanting for a long time to do a video of my roast stuffed chicken. Because according to some of the cooks like I've seen on TV, you can only achieve two of the three goals when it comes to roast stuffed chicken. One is cook the meat to the bone without drying out the breast meat. The second, get the skin crisp and golden brown. And third, get the stuffing to a safe temperature, like up above 160, 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Supposedly you, can, you can't get all three, but I've been doing it for years. So that's what I want to do today. I want to make this roast stuffed chicken Let's just say it's in the manner of roast suckling pig, but I've never roasted a suckling pig, so I really wouldn't know. To start off, let's start making the stuffing. When I make stuffing, I like working with bagels. And the reason why, especially when I can find good bagels, and I'm not happy with these, but they'll do. I like bagels because they're denser. And so they give me a little more dense al dente stuffing. And what I did, because I knew I was going to be making stuffing, was I cut two each into three slices. I cut through it twice to cut each into three slices. And I've been letting these dry out on a rack for a while. They're not dry yet. They're not dry enough. So I have my oven heating to 100, no, 200. 75 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 135 degrees Celsius. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my bagel into cubes like so. And then I'm going to spread these cubes on a baking sheet and dry these out for maybe 45 minutes to an hour in the oven. As far as the kind of bagels to use, I'm using one sesame seed and one with everything on it. We called these galaxies where I used to work, but I don't know what they're called elsewhere. Any bagels that you like, you can use plain, you can use onion. I like these because they're going to add a little bit of flavor to my stuffing along with the other ingredients that I'm going to use. When I make stuffing, I also like to use when I have it wild rice, which I do have some. I like to cook the rice in a stock because I'm also going to use the stock to moisten the bagels when they come out of the oven. So what I have here is two cups, that's 473 milliliters of homemade chicken stock. It's frozen because I freeze it in one cup containers and then pop them out and put them in a Ziploc bag. If you don't have homemade stock, you can use the broth that they sell in the store. I melted my stock in a medium saucepan. That's my two cups of stock. I'm putting in there two ounces, which is 57 grams of my wild rice. If you measure it volumetrically, it is about one third of a cup. And then I'm going to put in there one large bay leaf, 
going to reduce my heat to low, put a cover on that, and I'm just going to simmer that for about 40 minutes. Here are my bagel pieces out of the oven. I took these out after 30 minutes because hopefully you can see by the color that these are just now starting to brown. That means they're good and dry. So I'm going to let these cool for a few minutes and then I'm going to transfer these to a bowl. My rice now has cooked for 40 minutes. So I'm going to put it, I'm taking my bay leaf out, it and the chicken stock in my breadcrumbs, my, my bagel pieces rather, not breadcrumbs. And I'm going to let this cool. I put this in a metal bowl, by the way, so I wouldn't risk cracking a glass bowl. I'm going to let this sit for a while, stir that once in a while to make sure that all that liquid is absorbed. I mean, it's almost all absorbed now. I've got a one pound chub here of sausage meat. I'm going to be using half of this, which is 227 grams. I'll put the rest of this away and then I'm going to saute this to cook this lightly before I fry the sausage meat. I have some pancetta that I bought this morning. This is two ounces, about 57 grams. I'm just going to cut this up into small pieces and I'm going to cook this with my pork sausage meat. There's a lot of fat in pancetta. Okay, I've got a skillet heating on the stove here. I'm going to put a couple tablespoons of olive oil in there. And then I'm going to add the pork sausage meat. I'm break this up and start cooking that. And then with this, I'm going to put in the pancetta to cook it down. I don't need to cook this until it's really browned. I just need to cook this meat until it's thoroughly cooked. That's all. While that pork meat is frying, I have here some prosciutto. This is another two ounces. 227 grams. This doesn't need to be cooked like the pork because this is already pretty much ready to eat. But you can see the fat on there. So I'm going to add this toward the end of the cooking time on that pork just so I can rend some of that fat down. As you can see this meat now is pretty near cooked. So I'm going to add the prosciutto. Stir that in and maybe cook this for another minute. That, that meat cooked in like two or three minutes. It didn't take long at all. I had it over medium, medium high heat. I'm going to cook this for another minute just to rend any fat that's in that prosciutto. And then I can transfer this from the pan to a bowl and set this aside and do the onions. I have a large onion here, which is um, about 12 ounces, 340 grams. And I want to just chop this up, get that root section off. I love onion and stuffing, so I'm going to use this entire onion in my stuffing. I just want to make sure that it's cooked well. Okay. Just wipe that cutting board. And then I always have my own way of chopping onion. And I'm going to 
use fairly large pieces here rather than a fine dice because I just like onion in my stuffing. All right, then just cut, as I said, rather large pieces. Do the other half. I always mention that I don't like the way the chefs do it on TV because they just cut those long slices, then they cut toward their fingers. That gives me the creeps. So I quarter the onion and cut it the way I do so that the knife is always going down to the cutting board. And I have less risk to my fingers. Okay, so there's my onion. I need to saute this next. I'm getting ready to cook my onions. I'm going to use the same fat that was in the pan. The way I recovered this fat was I tilted the pan to one side, let it sit there for a while. All the fat drained out of that meat. I transferred the meat out of the pan to a bowl and now I have the fat to cook with. So there go my onions in there. When I want to saute these onions over medium-high heat, I'll reduce the heat as they start to cook. And I want to just cook these 8 to 10 minutes. Maybe I'll go a little bit longer, 12. I want to saute these until they're translucent and tender. I bought some fresh sage this morning at the store. I love fresh sage in stuffing. This is about 10 sage leaves, and I'm just going to chop this up kind of coarsely. I don't need it too fine. You can use sage from a spice jar if that's all you have. I just think fresh sage is so delicious in stuffing. Okay, so there's my sage. This kind of amuses me here. These are juniper berries. And they amuse me because I have outside my home a juniper tree. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I need ten of those. But I never get to pick the juniper berries because the birds eat them, which I don't mind. I watch the birds eat them. The birds eat them before I get a chance to pick them. They have kind of a pine flavor to them, if you can imagine a pine flavor. I'm just giving these a decent little chop because I'm going to use this as kind of an herb spice sort of a thing inside the stuffing. and I don't want really big pieces. I also have a rosemary bush in my backyard. And I'm going to pull off some of the needles here. Maybe something equivalent to about a tablespoon. Not a lot because rosemary is strong. And I'm going to chop this up as well. And again, like the juniper berries. I'm going to chop this kind of fine so I don't have any big pieces. All my prep work is done now. I'm ready to start assembling my stuffing. There are my bagel pieces and my wild rice. Those pieces absorbed all of the liquid, the cooking liquid from that rice. This is my sautéed onion. This is the sautéed meat. And then this is my chopped sage, my chopped rosemary, and my chopped juniper berries. I'm going to grind some black pepper in there. 
just a good generous grating of freshly ground black pepper when I can start mixing this. You can use a spoon or what I prefer to do is get my hands in there. Beautiful. I'll just think it's so much more efficient. Now I know this is going to need salt because so far I haven't worked with any salt. Let me take a little taste. Yeah. Good pinch of salt in there. And get that mixed in. It's already tasting very good. I've got to say, it's got a very um, woodsy, rustic flavor to it. Okay, taste it one more time with the salt. Oh yeah, that's delicious. Okay, now right away you're probably thinking that's way too much stuffing for a chicken. I always make extra because you know what it's like when you put stuffing on the table. Everybody wants extra stuffing, so I always make extra. I can cook that in a casserole dish while the chicken is roasting. And yes, that's a plane going overhead. I'm ready now to stuff my chicken. I'm not going to stuff this really full because stuffing expands a lot and I don't want burst chicken. I want roast chicken. So I'm going to put my stuffing in there kind of loosely to give some room for expansion. And as I mentioned earlier, I think I mentioned earlier, I've got plenty of stuffing here because you can never have enough. stuffing for a meal like this. Okay, a little bit more and I think that's all I'm going to put in there. Just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to rinse my hand here and then I've got to stitch this skin closed. So to stitch this closed, I'm going to tuck the tail up then in there if I can. Get that to stay in there. And then Got a large needle here that I've threaded with some kitchen twine. Gonna stitch that through. This is one of the thing that was things that was mentioned in that recipe to tightly stitch the skin closed at both ends but I don't have enough skin at the other end to stitch the neck closed. I'm using a paper towel to pull that needle through because it's slippery. Take the needle out and then I'm just going to tie this. Then I'll trim this and then that's good enough for that. Okay, now I need to truss the bird and I have my own way of trussing. First of all, why truss the chicken? Well, the idea is you want to just bring everything up together into a nice compact mass so that it'll roast evenly so that some pieces are not drying out while other pieces are still cooking. So I want to start off the way they do it on TV and I've seen videos where they have one big long string and they tie this section and they wrap it around here and tie this section. I just think it's easier to work with smaller pieces of string of twine. Get the pieces you want tied and then move on to the next section. So I'm going to tie the wings up first up against the breast meat. I'm doing a surgeon's knot here but it doesn't always hold the way I want it to. Okay, that's the breast meat tied together. Now the drumsticks, another piece of twine. 
don't need a big one for this because all I'm going to do is bring these together. I'll turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. I want to tie these really close together and I'm even going to cross them over when I tie them. Like so. And there's a reason why I want them crossed over and you'll see that in a bit. Okay, so there's that. And then second knot, tie that off. Finally, one big piece of twine. What I like to do is do the whole length of the chicken. And the reason why I want this crossed is because I'm going to put the string right between the two ends of those drumstick pieces there so that it's held in place by the drumstick being crossed. Same thing, surgeon's knot. And then pull that up. See how that all comes together? Watch again. Beautifully tied together. That's why I like doing it my way. And there it is. That is a nicely trussed chicken. I'm going to roast my chicken in a oval cast iron, enameled cast iron pan. I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom, not much, tablespoon or two. And then spread that around a little bit. I've got my salt and my pepper. I want to generously salt my chicken all over. It's okay if you get it all over the counter. Okay, wipe my hands and then start grating some freshly ground Let's stay put black pepper on there. I love freshly ground black pepper. And it usually makes me sneeze. Those cartoons were correct. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to put a rack in there. And then I'm going to put the chicken on the rack. I'm hoping that oil will help to protect the bottom so that things won't stick too much. Then, in the meantime, I'm heating my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 191 degrees Celsius. I'm going to put the lid on this and I'm going to roast this for one hour. At the end of the hour, I'm going to take it out, remove the lid, raise the temperature to 425 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 218 degrees Celsius. That's when I'll put that casserole dish of extra stuffing. And rather than cooking by time, I'm going to cook by temperature at that point. I'm going to check the temperature of my stuffing inside the bird. I want to bring it up to about 105, 155 degrees Fahrenheit, 68 degrees Celsius. Then when I take this out to rest, 10-15 minutes, heat will continue to migrate from the outside to the inside and that should bring that stuffing up to 165-170 degrees Fahrenheit. That'll be a nice safe temperature at which to serve this chicken. I wanted you to see what this looks like after the first hour of cooking. As you can see, it's not at all brown. <laughs> it looks steamed, but that's all right. This has been cooking now for an hour. I'm going to put my temperature probe in there that will monitor the temperature. I'm going to return this to the oven. I've raised the temperature to 425. Forgot what that is in Celsius. 
and but I told you earlier and then I'm going to bake this until I see some golden golden brown on the outside and the stuffing up to the temperature that I want it there is my roast chicken the stuffing came up to 155 degrees Fahrenheit I'm going to let this rest a little bit that's 68 Celsius for chicken turkey to be safe to eat the meat should come up to 180 degrees Fahrenheit which is 82 degrees Celsius the stuffing should come up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit that's 74 degrees Celsius this sitting for a while the heat will migrate from the outside to the inside well here it is here's my thermometer just moving it from the oven over to here it's already come up from 155 to 157 so that temperature is still climbing you can see the skin is crisp and golden on the outside it should be moist on the inside after this sits for 10 minutes we'll cut into it see what it looks like okay I'm ready to start carving this let's see first thing I want to do is get this wing off well, it should just pop right off there's the joint had the joint there we go I just want to get that out of the way so that there because I want to carve into this breast meat and see how tender and juicy this is I have a plate here on the side but oh goodness I can tell that that is going to be delicious breast meat okay I can slide this out of the way a little bit there's my chicken as far as vegetables with this if it were up to me I would be making sauteed Brussels sprouts but I know not everybody likes that corn on the cob would be good on this sweet corn broccoli green beans would be good with this too this is some of my extra stuffing this came out of the oven as well And there it is my last step is to see how good that tastes okay as I said I've been wanting to make roast stuffed chicken for a long time see that is so juicy I'm going to show you a fork no knife you can just cut that breast meat with a fork because it's that tender and juicy mm. and you saw how golden and brown it was on the outside and crisp who says you can't achieve you can't achieve all three goals of roast chicken oh that stuffing is so good so excuse me I'm going to go enjoy my roast stuffed chicken in the manner of roast suckling pig for a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs visit the white trash cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive